Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about serverless. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Hi Frederick, can you make a video explaining when to use serverless and when not to use serverless? I just can't differentiate the use cases. So, yeah, I can make a video about that, but I don't think it's going to make you all that much wiser after I explain it. Well, it's uh, I'm going to meta-explain it uh, as best as I can. And what I mean by meta-explain it is basically I'm going to tell you why I can't tell you when to use it and when not to use it in any meaningful way. And the reason why I can't tell you that really is because if I... The, 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 if you have seen any, and I mean any videos on this, or any blogs or anything about anybody saying that, oh, when to use serverless, etc, etc. What usually you will hear is a sales pitch, which is literally, the, and this is the thing that I want to kill. I want to kill this thing. Uh, I And I, I, it's not because I don't think, I don't, don't get me wrong. I understand why you and me and everybody who doesn't know about something fall for these videos over and over, like how to get a six pack in eight in eight minutes, uh, uh, how to learn how to invest in the stock market, etc., etc. These are very. Like, you have to understand, guys, that those sorts of videos and that, those that sort of content is the beginner stuff. It is the naive boiled down, simplified for mass consumption by m complete beginner types uh, of uh, content usually, that is what it is. So when somebody goes and asks, okay, when should I use serverless and when shouldn't I use serverless, uh, you have immediate, immediately shown me that you are not able to comprehend, in, uh, you, you're very unlikely to understand the real answer. And the real answer is that it depends. And the reason why it depends is because it's the same choice you would have to make if you asked, okay, should I use a monolith or should I use microservices? Should I use SOA, SOAP, REST, RPC, gRPC? Uh, should I use that language over that language, this language over that language? You're, you're asking because uh, you, you know too little. You know way too little to get a, for me to be able to answer this in an effective way because the real answer as i said is more complicated than you should use it now you should use it under these circumstances and you shouldn't use it under those circumstances uh, because everything has a pro have pros and cons and that's kind of the thing about software architecture the people who are architects or people who are senior level developers or like tech leads and so forth, they are paid usually quite a lot of money for a very good reason. And it is because they have been a part of enough development work, they've been in the industry for long enough to know what considerations needs to be taken into account when they're designing a system for a specific business need. As an example, if I told you that serverless is like uh, serverless is the best thing ever, uh, there's all these really nice things that you can gain from it, uh, and then you see you have a use case that actually makes this a bit of a hassle. Well, then it's not the right choice for you. So there's no way for me to say that yeah, use it under these circumstances and use under those circumstances because you need to understand what serverless means, what the limitations and the considerations are uh, of the of that choice versus what you need as the person who's building something. I mean, if you're building your, I could, the, the, I'll give you the most basic reason in the world when to use serverless: cost. Let's say for the sake of argument that you're building a your own startup, your own tiny company who has like a completely standard problem, a web application or something like that, and you have no needs for extra stuff, like you don't need a file system, you don't need a, I don't know, you don't need fine grain control of security, etc, etc. I mean, you can of course add these things on as well, but this is where it starts getting tricky, because now the question is, is cost actually gonna, <laughs> the cost thing becomes more interesting now. And 
what's good about serverless is that you only pay for the resources that you use. In other words, you don't have a running VM or like a several VMs or anything like that out there on on some type of cloud provider that is shooing away money because usually that's the thing that you pay for apart from you, know, you mean resource usage if you're using a lot of CPU or like if you're using a lot of storage or whatever uh, you pay for that of course as well but the actual uptime because if you have a bunch of VMs running that's money that is you that you're paying just to have that uptime but if you have a very small system or a system that isn't really used like all the time maybe you have a lot of spikes you might have uh, I mean a really good use case for serverless would be say cron jobs or scheduled things or something that's gonna run in a batch you don't like you you're only using it maybe once or twice a week or a few like if people are just using your system a few hours a day you only want to pay for the, the resources that you are consuming and that is exactly that's one really good situation to use serverless if that is your situation because it scales really well upwards and downwards and you don't pay for all that dead time where like nobody's using the system but you're still like you could have somebody who's using it and therefore you have to have like all of these resources spun up uh, that's shooing away at your wallet but uh, again the, the this thing it might be true at small scale but that larger scale it may not be so true so it really depends on what your situation is and that's why I argue that the best way for you to answer this question is to understand the problem that you are solving. You have to understand your problem and then go and have a look at people who have a similar sort of problem and look at what they have found to be true within your, within their sp within your space. Because I mean I can imagine many things that could be both harder and easier with serverless if you depending on what type of architecture you're dealing with. So I'm just going to like cover my ass here and just say that the best answer I can give you is that in a simple setup where you have like a small system and cost is a factor, use serverless. Otherwise, it very much depends and I will need a lot more information than to say, well, this is the use case for serverless and this is not the use case for serverless. Because at the end of the day, guys, the difference between serverless and say a monolithic application or microservices or so forth like at the end of the day what you're building is usually at the very least just something that takes a network call and it can be a serverless function like a lambda function it, that can be a monolithic application and it can be a microservice or whatever and then it's going to do some type of business logic usually persist something to a database and all of these solutions can do that thing it's all the other stuff around it that makes up whether or not this is the right choice for you and not. So like, the use case is the same for all of this. Like, it, all of these, uh, all three of these solutions will work and it really just comes down to what set of considerations do you have to make in your specific use case and you, I promise you regardless of which one you pick you are going to find people who are gonna say this is awesome for the thing that you want to do and then you're gonna have other people who say this really sucks and that's why we have all three because people have their own idea of what a good solution looks for it looks like and what the use case should be so what I want you to take away from this is that the answer to when you should use serverless and not is more complicated than I can possibly explain to you. It is, it's literally the same question as should I use monoliths or microservices or so forth. And the only thing I can give you is the same thing that probably every other person who's trying to answer this question for you is going to give you. And that is like the, 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 ch the toy answer the answer that is just simple that simplifies everything and I promise you by the time that you are experienced enough to understand why I can't answer this question in a like a really good way you won't need me to answer it for you because you're gonna be capable or you will understand you will get like you will understand all the parts that makes up software development and all the complexities and all the different variations of systems and what matters what doesn't matter etc etc and you will figure that out but the basic answer is usually cost. That is the popular thing to say. The thing that is good about serverless is that it's usually fairly cheap at small scale or when you have very spiky applications where for the most part you're not using 
your logic, like the functions that you've written, they really only get used like in a batch job or, or, or during peak hours or something like that because it's fairly fairly straightforward to very easily scale these uh, scale serverless, uh, both upwards and downwards. And since you don't have any virtual machines or anything like that, you don't pay for all that time they're not being used, which is a very good thing. But at higher scales, you can go and look at reports saying like how much like the cost analysis and analysis and so forth. But there are other things that are worth considering as well. But I can't cover all of that as I said in in this little video. So hopefully this is a good enough answer. Have a great day.